Hello everybody, Driven by Moss 17.0 is out. If you never heard of Driven by Moss, it's the extension for Bitwig and Reaper, which gives many new features to all your MIDI controllers. And in that version, especially, I looked at the archive fire and I added some nice features, especially a new drum sequencer mode. But before we look at this new drum sequencer mode, there's also some cool other features. So I loaded up a project with some example drum clips. And if we start now one, for example, you have now this new feature that you can temporarily start another one. You can do this by pressing the select knob and then keeping also press another one. So we have to that one and if you release it, you're back to the first one. So pretty cool if you for example here have a, a break or something and then you can go back to the normal one. You also can release the select button before that and then the other clip keeps playing. So the difference is then that it immediately starts the second one. Release the select button first and then we have here the second one still playing. There's another new feature, you can also combine it with the alt buttons. If you do so, you can only select the clip for editing without starting the playback. Another nice feature is if you go here in the perform mode and select here a row, there was a little bug before that it directly switched to that track, but that's actually normally not what you want if you want to mix here. So now you can select the track without changing the focus. If you go back to your previous mode, it will remember in which node, sequence or drum mode you have been. So for example, if you have been here in a piano, play layout if you prefer that you can go back here to the performance view and go back and you're still in a piano mode same as if you for example are here on a drum track if you have here on a drum track the drum layout or let's go here to the third one so the third drum layout so you go back then to perform and back to drum it also remembers the drum sequencer you did select previously Let's say we have here the send, so let's start playback again. So we have a lot of delay on it and you want to reset the delay. You can now keep this mode button pressed and then simply touch the knob and you are back then to the default value. And this works in all modes and with all knobs. So also the volume, for example, you can revert that to the default setting of minus 10 dB. Also, if you here, let's say we are here in a drum effects. You go for the high pass and then you can say, I want to reset that. I guess many of you have seen the Richie Horton video where he shows this new drum sequencer and this one is highly inspired by that as well. But I did some changes which make more sense in the context of the other modes and I also added some additional features to that. The main difference is Richie had the first row with uh, drum sounds and a second one with the clips. And I think it's a little bit more logic, but I guess it's always up to personal opinion, is to have the clips on the top and the second one is the drum sounds and then you have the sequencer. So it's more like a logical hierarchy, you go down. Also, these knobs here are a bit different, but let's have a look at that. So first basic idea is that you can copy, delete uh, your clip, so you can directly also select your clips. And also what I showed with this temporary moving to another one is also working here in that mode so you can say you keep the select knob pressed and temporarily go to that one and you are back to the first one so this is also working nicely in that mode you can also copy these clips so if you use this first button to do so maybe let's stop the playback the led indicates what you're doing so green is for copying if you press it again it's red for deleting so if you want to delete one then you keep the knob pressed and then select one okay so then you're in delete mode if you are first we need to go back to another one and then it gets green and active again to copy a clip, you keep also the button press, then you select your source clip and then your destination clip and then you will have a copy of the clip as well. So the next row contains here the drum sounds, you can also play them. 
<laughs> and if you only want to select it without playing, you can keep the Alt button pressed, so then you can also select it without making a sound. The nice thing is you can not only program the sequencer, you can also play it live. It depends on your setting. What happens if you press here an empty clip and record is enabled? I set it that an empty clip is starting. We can also put it here for overdub and then you can also activate the metronome which you might not hear in the recording but then you can play something And then you can do corrections or also program your beat fully. You can select here the drum sound and edit here then the row. So for example, we can have a four on the floor beat. And what I also did is that you have here a little bit of light difference to see that here. So it's a little bit easier to find your way around the numbers of fourth. So at the hi-hat. So much for that so you select your drum sound selected uh, thing you can also change the resolution so there are different functions here on top on these two buttons so if you go left right you can go to different pages so this is the first one you can have even much longer clips than only 16 or 32 bars now the thing is if you use it with the alt button then you can change the resolution so the default is that we are at 16th but you could also go as fine-grained as 32s and then it enlarges accordingly. You can also do solo or mute here. This is then the second button for that. And if you have the green LED lid, you are doing soloing. And if you press it again, I have the red one lid, you can do mute. Let's check that out. So keep the button pressed and then mute the buttons you want to mute. And there's also a trick to unmute them. You can use the alt button and combine it with that. And everybody will start playback again. Same is for solo. So for example, let's solo here the, the hi-hat. We can also unsolo all solo tracks as well with the alt button again. So we are all back in playback. You can also change the length of the clips. This is done by the third button and you can do that either temporarily by keeping it pressed or if you just press it without combination, you can also leave that active if you want to make quick changes to the length, for example, to simulate a break or something, you can do that as well. I also add a little bit of orientation here, the red buttons. So it's not the first one, it's a fourth. So it's easier to see what is the end of a part of the clip and then you can simply press the red one to change the length and also let's check that out you can also go to to one so that's the idea here you can as i said also do that temporarily and then release it and you're back to the normal playback you might wonder now what is the fourth button for so the fourth button is a quick access to enable note repeat as you might remember Note repeat is normally in all modes available with the shift button. So here you have the settings for the note repeat and here you can activate the note repeat. But here for this mode, it's quicker also to use the fourth button and then we have a note repeat here. And what you then can do as well, if you keep one of the pads pressed, you can change the period of the note repeat with the selection knob. So this can be, for example, used if you have a groove playing. So things like that. Uh, by the way, talking about the select knob, so select knob is also like any other mode. Change, you see the range of your drum pad, so you can also have more than 16 drum pads as well. And here we go back. And there's two more functions. One is that you can program note repeats. Go to the snare. 
And you can also change the length. It's only here a short one, but you can keep the first one pressed and the second, and then you have a very long sound. With that, you could now program here the pattern. You can keep that one pressed, the pattern up one, to increase the number of note repeats. So we can have now four, or let's say, let's say six note repeats here. Maybe let's go with eight. And if you keep that one pressed, you can also go down again. Or back to off. And the last trick is if you use the shift button with the grid buttons, you can move the current pattern to the left or to the right. You can see that here, it's here. And now we do that one. And then it moved one to the left. You can also see that here better on the screen. And you can try out then some groove variations with that. Okay, I hope I did not forget anything. If that's the case, just check out the manual. All everything is written down in detail, what you can do in all the modes, especially now the true drum mode. And I hope you like it, dig it, and make some funky music.